Hey everybody, Misty Williams with Creative Entrepreneur Radio here, and I'm excited for you to hear this interview that uh, that I did a little earlier with Jarek Robbins. Jarek uh, has written a book called Live It, um, and what I really love about Jarek is his commitment to really creating an extraordinary life as an entrepreneur. You know, he goes beyond the 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 hard work and the grit and the gutting it out it takes just you know to be a gladiator in the space creating and building something but he asks really intentional questions about what kind of life he wants to have and wants to live and not only has he you know taken the time to be introspective to create intentionally in his own life but he's dedicated his career to helping other entrepreneurs do the same thing he has um a retreat that he does aboard a cruise ship called the Rapid Results Retreat. And we're going to talk about that and him taking groups of entrepreneurs around the world to do really fun things at exotic locales that network with each other, but also to really dig in and learn and grow together. Uh, Really fantastic. And he talks a lot about uh, relationships and kind of his own journey in relationship and how important it is that we're conscious and intentional about creating a life as entrepreneurs that includes partnership because having um, a partner to share this journey with and to share the experiences of life with is really important, you know, to, to create and have and accomplish in the world and to not have someone to share it with, uh, most of us would say is definitely missing the mark. So lots and lots of good gems in this conversation. I'm really excited for you all to be joining us today. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Creative Entrepreneur Radio. We're going backstage to explore the lives, lifestyles, and growth strategies mastered by seasoned entrepreneurs around the world. Entrepreneurs are gladiators. Are you one of us? If you're a first-time listener, welcome. Feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes and check out our show notes at creativeentrepreneurradio.com. Up now, host and founder of MarketTechU.com, Misty Williams. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Creative Entrepreneur Radio. Misty Williams here. Really excited to talk to my next guest today. At only 23 years old, Jarek was awarded the Congressional Award from the United States Congress. He's a keynote speaker, an executive coach with over a decade experience coaching executives, entrepreneurs, and others who are passionate about creating and living an intentional life. His ideas have been featured in standout channels like TEDx, Huffington Post, CNBC, and Fast Company, and he's developed his own philosophy about living with passion that centers around the idea of developing your ideal day. He's developed rapid results retreats and extended at-sea experience for achievers that mixes relaxation, fun in the sun, and intimate workshops dedicated to supporting you in the areas of emotional, physical, and spiritual health, as well as wealth, relationships, time management, business practices, and beyond. Jarek has also written Live It, a step-by-step guide for filling the gap between where you are today and where you want to be. He's got a website called helpmefindlove.net that teaches you how to learn from your past relationships and prepare for future relationships. So when you meet the man or woman of your dreams, they're yours for keep. Whether it's cage diving with great white sharks, hanging with silverbacks in Rwanda, whitewater rafting down the Nile, working as a volunteer in underdeveloped regions, or building a powerful enterprise that's built for results, Jarek does more than talk about it. He stretches the boundaries of traditional thinking and makes it happen. I'm really excited that you're with us today, Jarek. Well, thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, yeah. So I first met Jarek um, at a conference, an event that we've um, both attended multiple times. And over the last, gosh, I feel like it's probably been about 10 years, um, I've seen you develop different dimensions of of this kind of enterprise, I guess you would say, um, including the rapid results retreats. I actually tried, um, to, to go out with you guys once a couple of years ago and just couldn't get the logistics to work out in my life, but it just seemed so unbelievably fun to, you know, go do an event like this with other achievers and just spend weeks together getting out of our traditional environments and, um, and experiencing new things, seeing different parts of the world, doing workshops and stuff together. So um, you've done some really cool stuff, and I'm excited to dig in and hear about some of your adventures and also learn a little bit more about your journey. So um, let's start with um, let's start with just 
kind of how you got into this space. When did you start your business? And um, tell us just a little bit about what the whole journey has been like. I know that it seems like everything kind of, I guess, flows from this hub of coaching. You know, you do, you work with a lot of different executives and um, entrepreneurs in a coaching capacity, but there's seems to be a lot of dimensions to this. And I would really just love to hear like, how, how did you know this was your calling? How did you get involved in this space? You know, what is, what is that whole journey been like for you? Sure. Um, How I got started was in this specific company was five years ago. I had, been working for my family's company for six, seven, eight, about eight years. And I had worked in every department from a nonprofit, answering the phone, stuffing boxes at the warehouse to um, coaching for them, training for them, uh, uh, working in the sales department, doing outside sales, inside sales, uh, so all kinds of places. And, I, and, and you know, it was a standard you're just out of school or finishing school and working in all the departments of a company type jobs. <laughs> right, right. And coaching was something I, I, I really connected with. My my background in education, as far as school is concerned, was a BA in psychology from the University of San Diego. So I loved people. I loved learning about people and watching what they did and how, helping people in my own unique way. And I looked for things at one point in my life where I was trying to figure out what activities do I do that allow me to literally fall in love with life, meaning I disappear, time disappears, nothing else matters. And when I focus on those activities, how do I do more of those? And, you know, first, how do I do them where it doesn't cost me anything? Second, how do I do it where I could actually um, maybe get paid for it? (laughs) Mm -hmm. And and so that was the thought of, you know, if I I love doing certain things, well, I apologize. First, how do I do it for free? Then how do I get paid for it? And how do you do it for free was, you know, is there a way to trade? So I didn't look at it as a business per se. I just said, what do I love to do? And one of those things was I love to travel. So I, I went and I paid to go on this trip where it was like seven countries, 14 days. And I took you know three friends with me and we had the time of our lives. I'm like, this is so flipping cool. And I thought about it. I was like, I wonder if I could do this for free every year because I would love to do this every year. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want to pay for it every year. I mean, I can, but I don't want to. Like, I want to figure out if there's a creative way I could trade to be able to do this for free. And... I looked around and I was like, wow, you know, they have all these other speakers and lecturers on board. And uh, the the speakers and lecturers were quite different than me. You know, they were Supreme Court justices and Harvard professors. And I was like, well, I don't necessarily know if I really fit in that crowd. And one of the gentlemen was the hotshot lawyer who was Martin Luther King's lawyer during his trials. I'm like, wow, like these people have done some legit stuff in their life. Right. (laughs) How in the world do I fit on that stage? And so I came up with a plan of some things I could talk to the community on board this ship about, and I presented it to the people in charge, and they liked it. And they're like, hey, that'd be fresh and new, and I think we'd bring in some young blood, because the average age at the time was like 75 on board. Right. They're like, you know, we might get some young people who are interested in coming on board to hear your stuff. And I was like, sweet. Partnered up. We brought like 20 people the first time, and they're like, this is awesome. We love the fact that you're bringing on a young crowd into this community, and, and they dig it, and it fits very well. So we partnered up with them, and... We started doing it, and it was amazing. And then my thought was, you know, I, it was an educational-based retreat, so I didn't want to take money from them. I could make plenty of my own money in my own business. And they were offering me to, you know, do this stipend to come and speak for them and to, to cover my ship fare to be able to do the trip with everybody for free. And I was like, hey, I got it for free. And then I asked a third question. I wonder if I can get paid for this. You know, I wonder if I can make some really good money for my business in doing something I love in a really fun and creative way. And I sat down and came up with a a way to do it. And I was like, listen, how about this? I'll charge what I think this is worth to the people I bring with me. You can, you know, people can pay on ship if they want to join us, a small fee, and you can keep that. And then just waive my fees and don't pay me a dime. And they're like, really? You'll speak for us without charging? I was like, yeah, I don't do it for everybody, but let me charge my own thing and I'll make my own money. And honestly, you know, the few hundred dollars they were offering to, to pay me to be on board the ship for 14 days, I was like, dude, I can, I can make yeah. thousands of dollars myself. So that doesn't make sense to me to do it for a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> and so I packaged it up. I, I came up with what I believed it was worth. I offered it. And we brought 20-some people with us at a, at a few thousand dollars a piece. And it, and it made a whole lot of sense to us. We were mm-hmm. like, wow, you know, now I'm making 20, 30 grand uh, from taking a trip that last year I paid for and loved. 
And we're offering enough value that people really actually love the experience. This is like the typical like entrepreneur success story. Not, I wouldn't call it too typical, but you know, to be an entrepreneur, the way that you have to think about things is how do I basically make a deal come together where I'm looking out for the interests of everyone involved and I find a way for everyone to win. Exactly. You know, I call one. Yeah. They, they got new traffic. Exactly. We, won. we got tons of business and our clients won because they freaking got their lives changed and loved the experience. Exactly. Exactly. It takes that kind of out of the box thinking. I just had a call with a client yesterday and she's had a couple of big deals fall through for the year. Some sponsors that normally sponsor her. She's a speaker and trainer and, and, um, and she's, you know, of course, frustrated and a little bit overwhelmed that a big chunk of her revenue is going away. And I saw it totally differently. I saw it as, oh my gosh, you have so many relationships and you're so creative. You've been doing this for 10 or 15 years. And what you come up with next is going to be so much better than what you just had. Um, and sometimes that muscle will atrophy a little because we haven't used it in a minute. Cause you know, we're riding the wave of the current that we created, you know, six months ago or whatever, but, um, but that's like the hallmark of a great entrepreneur, I think, is being able to see what others aren't seeing and um, come up with a way to create a shift and give you what you want and help everyone to win. So, yeah. So that that's how we got started on different projects like that. the The base level that I started off on was performance coaching. And I originally, I've, I've called it just about everything because I didn't know what I was doing in the area of marketing or sales for a good amount of time. Um, but in the beginning, I called it life coaching and, and business coaching and strategic coaching and results coaching and all this other jazz. And, and the truth is when you sum it up, it's performance coaching. Right. We, we specialize in helping people who are already doing very good at something and helping them do it even better than they're doing it now. Right. And, you know, we've, we've taught people tools and help build businesses and do all this other stuff. And that's not our specialty. There's other people who are much better at that than we are. And that, that was one of our major lessons in growing over the past almost six years now, which was just stepping down and saying, okay, you know, we can make money selling just about anything to anyone, but that's not what we're doing. Like, what is our actual gifts that we can offer anywhere, anytime, any place? And the way I always looked at it, was I wanted to give myself a skill set as a human being so that I could get dropped anywhere on earth without knowing a single soul, without knowing the language even, and I could add enough value to the local community that in the beginning it might be through bartering, but eventually, as I'm adding this value to the local community, I would be able to have the life I wanted, I would be able to experience everything I, I dreamed about, I'd be able to take care of my family and friends, and, and really be in a place that I, I could live life in my dreams. Mm -hmm. So you have, um, you've got this rapid results retreats, you know, at sea experience that you've created for your clients and you do this coaching stuff too. And you also have a big part of your, your business and your life really that's focused on love and relationships, which I think is just a really great compliment to, um, to anyone that's wanting to achieve professionally, you know, and create this great life, you want to have someone to share it with. And um, I have found with my peers that a lot of times, you know, working so hard to achieve success in one area of your life causes you to kind of neglect another area. And I think that it's been important to you, or it seems to be from what I've gathered, it's been really important to you to kind of master that dance a little bit, you know, so that you're not leaving one area of your life behind and you've really got some great traction with not only your own personal development, but helping others to create those same results in their own life. Uh, here's what I tell you. There's different stages. The very first stage, which is what the book's about, which is, you know, 10 years of summarizing a big chunk of my life. Um, I, I think when we were talking before the interview, I, you had mentioned the fact that you heard me say I, it took me 10 years to write the book and it really did. Uh, only because the the tools that are in the book I had 10 years ago easily. Mm -hmm. the, the difference between having the tools and living the tools was the biggest 10-year chunk that it took to make happen. Mm -hmm. um, because there are lots of tools in there that I knew about ever since I was a kid and I've heard of and I've thought about and I've done it every now and then. But when I finally got myself to do it every single day consistently, the tools that are daily and monthly and weekly, etc., when I finally started doing these things and really living it, I got all the results I wanted. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, like now I'm walking, talking, sleeping, breathing, the results that I speak about in the book. And it's like, wow, I've, I've really got this. And then that wasn't good enough. I, uh, you know, getting myself to do it's beautiful and great. Good for me. What if it works for one person on the planet? Yippee. Um, but how does it really translate to other people? 
So then we took the exact same tools and we started applying them in our clients' lives and saying, hey, use this formula, use this system, follow this step, do these things. And thousands of clients now have gone through those, pro- those steps and gotten the results too. And so we literally tested it and used it again and again and again and again and again. And I wanted to release that book 10 years ago out of pride and ego and, hey, look at me, I'm doing it. Right. <laughs> but it wasn't right. It wasn't the right time. Right. Um, and, and, you know, I had a track record of releasing stuff way too early because I got excited about it, like many entrepreneurs do. Sure. Versus really taking the time to vet it out, use it with dozens or thousands, even hundreds of people if you want. So I don't care what number you use, but really vet it out, use it with other people, get, get real, tested, true results, and then release it to the general public. Right. So, one and of the. That was, so, that was a big piece there. But here's, here's what I figured out. Once you achieve everything you want to achieve in life, if you don't have someone to share it with, it's worth nothing. It really is. It's such a bummer. You see people go out there and achieve every dream they've ever desired, whether it's making money, building houses, building schools, saving the world, changing an industry, building a company, providing to the community. No matter what it is they're after, you see people achieve their ultimate goal all based around them, their life, their success, their business, their whatever. And if they don't have people to share it with, it literally, if you watch their face long enough, it's exciting for a few minutes of life. And then it looks literally like an empty promise that they just got. Because all that fulfillment and all that joy they were after, it's not there if there's not someone to share it with. Mm -hmm. Or if the person that you're supposed to be sharing life with has been you know, isolated or relegated from the journey that you're on or if the relation, the quality of the relationship isn't supportive. I mean, there's probably a lot of ways that you could spin that so that it applies whether you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s or whatever. So, yeah, if someone spent 65 years building a company that they're so freaking proud of and they turn around and they've been married for 32 years, but at the end of the 32 year journey, their, their wife's kind of tapped out or their husband's kind of tapped out right. of something else in life because they got tired of waiting around for 20 years. Right. Same thing. Yeah, totally. You just, you touched on something, um, as you were kind of working up to that, that I call the law of crawl, walk, run. And that is haste makes waste. I will start slow and scale with success. Big leaps follow many small steps. And I've seen this a lot, especially as, especially with newer entrepreneurs. I think once we were in the game for a few years, <laughs> we've been drugged behind a, the truck a couple of times because we've, you know, been so eager to launch stuff out. We get a little bit more calculating, you know, in how we go about things. Um, but um, this whole idea of starting slow and scaling with success has become intriguing to me, even as, you know, I keep building my business and... Um, and my clients too. I'm kind of curious if you'd be up for sharing, you know, a time that that you didn't start slow and scale with success, and how that's influenced the way you go about launching things now. Sure. Um, I, I launched my very first product, and in the beginning, you need to do stuff like this because without it, you'll never, ever, ever launch your stuff. Exactly. <laughs> and I did it, and I, I packaged it, I edited it, I filmed it, I did everything myself. Um, You can tell because I have the awesome green screen halo around my body during the entire footage of the whole program, (laughs) um, which is beautifully awesome and amateur editing at its best. And I did it on myself. I plopped it up there and I launched it. I think one of my favorite moments of that launch was calling the pro- credit card processing companies and letting them know I'm going to have a big launch, talk to traffic, <laughs> up my numbers. What's my limit? 250000 I mean, we need to pull it up to probably $2.5 just in case. <laughs> Don't hold my money. I'm going to need it released immediately. And then the day comes, and I think I sold like 10 copies for 500 bucks. All right. It's like, wow, dang, that's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm better than this, I promise. <laughs> yeah, I, I called them back. I'm like, hey, sorry about that. I hope it didn't bug you too much. My bad. <laughs> and they all laughed, and I laughed, and I was like, wow, you know, definitely cried wolf on that one. Didn't know what I was doing. It was the first time. It made it seem so easy from all these internet marketing guys I was learning from. Um, but I, I had my giant, you know, brick wall experience, ran face first into it and went, ouch. But I didn't let that stop me. Um, and and I'm, I'm really glad I did. And, and the content was valuable. The packaging, the delivery of it was not my best. I mm-hmm. could have done way better. Now, what's interesting about that, having that huge flop, I, I landed up selling about $40,000 worth of it in the first year, which that's a full-time income for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And being like, wow, you know, that was kind of cool. 
And how did I do it? I, I partnered up with the right people. I, I went and found people to resell it for me, and I, I found companies to work with that had big platforms already that thought it was a great program, and they launched it out to their people, and it did pretty well. That's you such know? an important part of like building these kinds of businesses is appreciating the value of strategic partnerships and the right relationships and kind of what you, the point you made a little bit earlier, going back to learning how to make the right kind of deals. And you just, you really can't grow this kind of business. I have a lot of people, um, in my, in my tribe that are, are speakers and, um, have been building their speaking career for a while and want to launch products like what you're talking about. And it, your network really matters. That web of influence you've developed really matters. And, um, and yeah, putting together the right kinds of, of alliances to hit your sales goals. So, but there's a bigger question to ask when thinking about that network, and it's how much are you currently investing in that network? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Meaning, you know, you're going for a withdrawal, but have you made deposits? Right. <laughs> how many of those people have you helped? How many of those people have you joined their affiliate team and help you know spread the word about their products and their services and what they're up to? Mm-hmm. How long have you been? doing everything you're about to ask from them, how, how long have you been doing that for them? That's right. So many people show up. I get emails all the time. They're like, hey, you don't know me. Um, I have this awesome opportunity that you can make a ton of cash at. And I'm like, wow, you obviously don't know me because we don't sell stuff to our community just because we can make cash off of it. Right. <laughs> right. It's not our goal. Right. <laughs> if you're like, you don't know me, but I think I could help your community. I'm like, okay. And I got to be careful saying that because I'm sure I'm going to get 12 emails from this interview of people being like, you don't know me, but I could help you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that thought of really knowing who your people are, getting connected with them and finding a way to serve them at the greatest level first before you ever ask anything from them. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I was not good at. I mean, to, to go down the list of things I'm not good at in business, this is another thing I was not good at in the beginning. Uh-huh. Um, I remember writing emails and being like, Hey, I know we've met once, but would you be willing to help me spread the word? It's really awesome. It changed lives. Come on. Mm-hmm. And, and being like, wow, like I was incredibly unprepared for that moment. And, and it made me look around and be like, wow, I'm, I'm going to keep tally on my own. This isn't to share with anybody. It's not to say, hey, I've helped you twice. Now it's your turn. Because I, I would never treat people like that. It's just to say, in, in my mind, I want to be the giver. Yeah. I want to be the person looking at people that I want to connect with, do business with, be friends with, connect with. And I want to say, listen, I always want to make sure there's more tally marks on my side of giving to them than ever asking anything from them. Mm -hmm. And that one fundamental in business changed the dynamic of relationships with just about everyone I know in business. And, you know, I think that one of the things that people deal with too, I certainly see it in my own career trajectory is you have to, you've got to see yourself as someone who has a contribution to make to other people that are in business. You know, I remember when I first started out, I was, I was young. I went on my own, at 25, did artist management in Nashville for probably four years and then launched my company. I was 29 years old. Um, I'm 39 now. And, you know, I remember really believing in the contribution that I had to make to the world. And, you know, just from my own experience, I knew that that the things that I did and the way that I did them and my ability to kind of tack between right and left brain and all that was really great. But I didn't necessarily see myself as a peer to other entrepreneurs or business people. Like I... I knew what I wanted to be and was endeavoring to create, and I was obviously always trying to, con- you know, hold myself in a way that would inspire confidence in people to hire me. But I didn't see myself as someone that had a lot to offer other entrepreneurs or people in the space that I might admire and respect. And a shift happened for me a few years ago where I realized I think it was subconscious for me actually that um, that I I wasn't. I wasn't stepping in as a peer and I wasn't looking for opportunities to contribute as a peer. And I think it's because I didn't feel worthy of being called that to a lot of people, you know? Um, But that was a pretty massive shift for me too. Whenever I started really paying attention to reciprocity and paying attention to the ways that I'm giving to my peers and supporting them and what they're doing in business. I mean, it's really strengthened what I call the web of influence that, you know, is part of my own life in business now. And, I see it in my clients too. So it's super important. Yeah. So let's talk about 
speaking of, you know, this network and relationships and stuff that you're building, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing with the retreats and the kinds of people that come on those retreats. And tell us about some of the adventures that you've experienced. Cage diving with great white sharks. I mean, that was quite the the list of things in the intro that that you've done. And um, And I'd love to hear how people are, you know, benefiting from being part of these experiences and how they're harnessing it in their businesses and their lives. Sure. Um, a lot of those experiences, I, I can do pages and pages and pages of crazy things that I throw myself into in life, um, from shark diving to skydiving to race car driving to just about everything. I, I think I have an adventure junkie, you know, living in my blood. Right. <laughs> and, and it wasn't always that way. I, I was a wimpy little kid that was scared of all kinds of stuff as a child. Um, But I I grew into a man that just loves adventure and and thrill and all kinds of stuff like that. And along the journey, I've gotten to do many, many things. I've been totally blessed along my journey to have these experiences and, and obviously live through most of them, all of them, (laughs) at least for now. (laughs) Right. And and looking back, a lot of those came through when I was in college, I got to do an experience called semester at sea. And that was a 110-day voyage around the world on a ship. So we got to circumnavigate the globe, which is another awesome thing to add to the cool list. Um, and we left from Vancouver, went all through Asia, all around Africa, You know, came around the Cape of Good Hope, all the way back up to Venezuela, or Brazil, Venezuela, back up to Florida. So we literally circumnavigated the globe on a ship in 110 days. And in that process, we got to stay about five to, ten, five to seven days in each country and experience what life was really like there. And that trip opened up my heart to the world in a way that nothing else has even come close to. Mm-hmm. And it opened up to the, my heart to the world in, in realizing how the majority of people on this planet live. And I can almost guarantee if you're listening to this radio show, podcast, blog, post, wherever you're finding it, if you're listening to this, I can almost guarantee you are one of the few, not the many. Mm-hmm. And you might be like, but wait a second, I'm a farmer in Nebraska. It's like, sir, if you're in the U.S., you are doing better than 99% of the planet. <laughs> right. Period. Even if you're homeless in the U.S., you're doing better than most of the planet. <laughs> and and that sounds crazy and insane to say, but it's true. When you visit some of these countries that are developing nations and you see how life really is day to day, it it opens your heart and spirit in a whole different way. And so part of these retreats is my promise to myself when I first had that experience is I will take people back to experience this firsthand because what it did for me in my life and opening up and allowing me to see life in a whole new way, more people need that. And not just a five star, you know, yeah, I've been on safari with people carrying your stuff behind you and everything's perfect and, you know, blissful the whole ride. Like you need to go spend a night or two in a village, right? You need to wake up and sleep with the local tribe and figure out what it's really life in their life. You need to, um, you know, take a shower with a cold bucket of water that came out of a rusty pipe. And it sounds crazy and insane. Um, but we tie these things in, in ways that make it actually really fun and advent and adventure, something you're excited about and people's lives change. Yeah. And so, you know, some of the stuff we've done on our retreats is the, the crazy wild fun stuff. We've done volcano boarding in Nicaragua where we hike up an active volcano, um, and it takes about an hour and 45 minutes to get to the top. It takes about 45 seconds to get back down to the car, um, which is rad. Mm-hmm. And, and literally, you hike up an active volcano, slide down the other side on these cool boards, um, zip lining through Costa Rica, the fastest, longest zip line in the world we've gone down. Uh, we visited Machu Picchu as a group and got to you know stand on top of the world and experience a lost city that's hidden up there. It's amazing. Um, we've taken people... Uh, snorkeling and boating and jet skiing and everything else in between. Uh, just recently we went to Thailand. We rode elephants. We lived in a village with hill tribes for a few nights. We hiked three days through the hills of Thailand. Um, it was amazing. Yeah. And we, we mix so the like crazy fun wild adventure with philanthropy. Uh, we've built houses in Guatemala. We've built. We've done. You know, we took the 200 poorest families in. in uh, Manta, Ecuador, and we partnered with the mayor of the city and created a Christmas party for them and brought Santa Claus and elves and, you know, toys and food and supplies for all the families. Um, we've built a school in Guatemala. We just recently helped lay the foundation for a family's home in um, Thailand while we were there. So we've done all kinds of stuff like that, philanthropy-wise, giving mm-hmm. back, making a difference. We provided all the school supplies for a few years for a Thai school as well. 
uh, just as a small group. Yeah, you know, those those is, things this. are so heart opening too. You know, just I remember my first missions trip to Mexico in high school, and just how it just shifted my view of the world and people and what I had and the feeling of building. We were um, building medical clinics there and actually seeing people, and it, it was very transformative. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yeah, and then the final piece is we work on ourselves. Um, just about every human being I know, if you dig in. There's stuff they need to work on, whether it's you know setting their vision for the next five, ten, and twenty years of life. If they don't have a crystal clear vision on paper of exactly what's going to happen and how they're going to make it happen, um, if it's really making sure that that vision is their vision and no one else's. You know, so many people spend twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, even sixty years of their life, seventy years of their life, achieving this plan. You know, going after these goals, only to wake one wake up one day and realize, wow, these were my grandma's goals. Mm-hmm. Or these were my, my mom's goals. Or these were my dad's goals. Holy smokes. What are my goals? Mm-hmm. And we challenge people to figure that out sooner than later. Right. Um, reorganizing their values. I think just about every single person who's ever gone on this trip with us shows up and we ask them on day one, you know, what's most important to you in life? And they'll always tell us, they'll, they'll say, you know, God, family, making a difference, being a good person, achieving success, being healthy. We're like, great. Where do you spend all your time? Most valuable resource you have in your entire life, where do you invest it? And 90% of the people look at us and go, uh, work? And I'm like, well, if your work gets you closer to God, makes you a good person, gives back, makes a difference, keeps you close with your family and does everything else, you were on target, ma'am or sir. (laughs) (laughs) Um, If your work doesn't help you achieve all those values you just listed at an even higher level each and every day, sums up. Right. And... You know, by the end of the retreat, it helps realign. We have a process that helps people realign that and figure out, wow, you know, how can I create a lifestyle? Even if I'm in a normal nine to five job in a corporation, how can I create my life in a way where I'm living so congruently with what I think is most important that I get to feel that zest of life every day? One of the things that I'm really passionate about, I call it being a lifestyle entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. is, you know, developing um, developing my, my business and my career, which I is so inextricably woven with who I feel like I am as a person, you know, um, but being mindful of, of the role that business plays in my life and does it support these different areas of my life. And as much intention as I put into it, I'm listening to you talk and I'm thinking, man, I could probably really benefit from holding myself up for a few days and asking myself some of these questions and really measuring, you know, how on target am I and what things could I shift? Yeah, it's a big one. And for entrepreneurs, especially when you come back to relationships, um, uh, uh, you know, there's three level, there's three stages to every level. And I, I can identify at least three levels from where I stand now in my venture of life at 30 years old. Right. Um, level one is a single person trying to figure their stuff out. And level one is three stages. Stage one, you don't know what works, and you have to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week to figure what figure out what works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you go nuts in the process. You're like, ah, <laughs> trying everything. You're like, does this work? Does that work? I don't know. I don't know. Ah. And eventually, you figure out what works, and you progress this, you know, stage two of level one, which is you know what works, and you figure out how to do it. Uh, the key with stage two is if – you don't consistently do what works, it will all fall apart. Right. (laughs) And so it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. And in these first two stages, there is no such thing as balance. So when people are like, oh, I want to be a lifestyle entrepreneur so I can like, you know, work to live, not live to work. Or yeah, so I can have this like beautiful life and do what I want and chill and like wake up with the light and all this other cool, awesome stuff. Uh, The challenge is the, the first two stages they have to get through, which they can do very quickly if they want, but they have to go through these first two stages, which is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nothing else happens in my life. I've got to build this business. Now, once they figure out how to make it work, they then get to progress to stage three of level one, which is systemization. Mm-hmm. You know, you systemize what works. You get it to a place where it's almost effortless. Right. Because you know how to do it. You know when to do it. You know how to apply it. And I remember my own experience when I first got to this stage of life, like I worked nonstop for the first three, four years, just go, 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 go. Finally got it to work, you know, made my six figure income, living on the beach, 
driving a cool car, the whole lifestyle as a young guy in California. <laughs> and I got to a point where I'd systematized it, and I was literally like waking up with the sunrise, going to the gym, doing, you know, running on the beach, uh, sitting on the beach for a few hours, journaling, then coming in, doing some training calls, going to yoga, hanging out with friends in the afternoon. And people are like, holy smokes, like you get paid for that? <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm like, only because I spent four and a half years figuring out how in the world to make it this way. Right. But here's what's crazy. Level two is you add someone to the mix. So I, I met my wife, and we weren't married at the time, but we met each other. We moved in together. We decided we were going to, you know, we got engaged, moved in, decided we were going to get married. And all of a sudden, I'm on the next level, meaning I have someone to share it with, but instantly kicked back to stage one. Right. <laughs> meaning all hell breaks loose, and it's like, ah! <laughs> mm-hmm. Got to work 24-7, got to figure this out, you know, got to put it together. Got, you know, I basically took the puzzle, threw it everywhere, went, oh, shoot, and got to figure out how to put it back together, except for now it's twice the size. Mm-hmm. So there's more pieces. And at this moment, if there's anyone listening who's in this category of building a business and you have someone else, a significant other, someone you love, boyfriend, girlfriend, your wife or husband in your life – Here's the most important thing I've ever learned in relationships, and it was the hardest thing to learn how to do at this moment. Put your partner first before your business, before everything else in your life. And what does that look like? That means if you're sitting at your desk, and let's say you're a guy, just because I know this side of the story a lot better than the girls. (laughs) (laughs) But if you're sitting at your desk working on a project and it's 11 a.m., and you're like, hey, these are office hours. This is business time. I'm focused. I'm in this. And all of a sudden you hear... And you open the door and you're like, yep. And she's like, I got to talk. That means you shut down your business stuff and you go talk to your partner. Because she comes first. Period. Before business. But what if I'm in a million dollar meeting? Doesn't matter. If you want to do life on your own, tell her that. Let her move on. Go do it by yourself. Go have your million dollar meeting. Put it first. All you want. But if you want to have a relationship, the relationship comes first. Now, I can pretty much hear through these headphones every entrepreneur going, oh, but uh, 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 having a minute seizure on the other end of whatever they're listening through. Um, I can also hear people who are 30, 40, 50 years my senior being like, oh, he'll figure it out. <laughs> Just tell her that this is what you're doing, and that's how you get your time to be able to focus on your business first, son. And I'll, I'll call BS on all of it. You have to learn how to put your partner first. And it's the scariest thing to do, especially for an entrepreneur who's quote unquote figured it out. And you know, they and you feel this. like you have a lot to lose as an you entrepreneur. Have, you, you have a ton to lose. Mm-hmm. But there's something more important than all of that, and that's the person you get to share your life with. Right. Because I guarantee at the end of your life, if you said, Hey, you only get one. I guarantee every person on planet, if they're with the right person, would one million percent choose the person over the business. Mm-hmm. But they don't always make that decision every day. Right. That is the hardest decision to make in level two, stage one. Right. But when you can make that decision, so no, 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 my partner comes first. My husband or wife before the business. All of a sudden, you will get a teammate that you've never experienced in any way, shape, or form in your entire life before. You will get someone that sends so much good energy into who you are as a human being, you will be able to do two, three, four, five times the work than you've ever done in your life, and you will be inspired at a level and energized at a level and supported and cherished and cheered on at a level that you cannot, can't even wrap your head around for most mm-hmm. people. Yeah. And it, it's unbelievable freedom that shows up when you're able to do this. Right. Now what happens is now you put your partner first. They know that they come first no matter what. All of a sudden, they're on your team. And it doesn't mean they're doing the work with you, but they're behind you 100%. And for a man to know that that person has his back, there's nothing more important on earth. Mm-hmm. Meaning come hell or high water, thick or thin, lose everything, make everything, doesn't matter. She's got my back. Yeah, That's it's everything. a great feeling if you're a woman too. <laughs> like I said, I don't know the woman's side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to know that that person's behind you no matter what happens, it's an amazing feeling. Right. And to have them supporting you. Now, on the flip side, here's what I do know for women. To be able to do what you do and have a man admire you for it and praise you for it and acknowledge you for it and appreciate you for it, there's nothing better on earth Mm -hmm. than, you know, coming home and having a partner be like, oh, you're working on your business, huh? You're like, oh, shit. Like, 
you got to be on the same page and they have to know they come first. Right. They have to know that you're willing to shut down a meeting. You're willing to shut it off. You're willing to walk out if they need you. Right. And the truth is once they know that and they're certain about it, uh, they won't ever take advantage of it for the most part. Some will, but most won't. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And what happens is all of a sudden now you progress to level, you know, level two, stage two, and you're in a place where you know it works and you, you can get it to work. You put your puzzle together. You got it going. You have to keep working 24-7 at it. Eventually, you systematize it. Normally, at this stage, because you have a significant other, you need to bring other people on the team and learn how to, you know, at this point, outsource and systematize the other people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get other team members working, which creates a bunch of different dynamic relationships in itself. But eventually, you know, you own it as a couple. And you get to a place where, just like I was on the beach doing yoga, working out, having fun, hanging out, enjoying my life, you get to a place where my wife and I are at now. We're recently married, only last September, so only a few months. But we've been working our tails off for the last year and a half, optimizing everything we're doing to get to a place where we're just now systematizing and getting into that effortless place. Yeah. And we do have a life that that most people think is a freaking fairy tale, but it's true. I mean, we get to wake up when we want. We do a handful of training calls throughout the day. We do a handful of trainings throughout the week that we go speak at and train companies. Um, We do our marketing every week. But, uh, you know, for the most part, if you compared our life to most people's jobs, people would be like, holy smokes, you get paid for that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then we get paid very well for what we do. And we're we're growing every year, which is crazy. Yeah. And, And it's the thought process of we've designed this system to support our life and give us the life we want. And I also get questioned of like, oh, do I have to be a coach and speaker and information marketer to do this? And it's like, no, that's a, that's a lame excuse. Um, you know, we've met, we search out couples who have normal brick and mortar businesses who do this as well. And I remember meeting a couple who mom and dad, two kids, and they were sailing around the world for three, four, four and a half months on a ship. The same ship I went around the world on. They were actually on it as a family. Mm-hmm. And he was running his entire brick and mortar print and print marketing business in San Diego from the ship via email. You can do it. I mean, I have a virtual team. They're all over the place. It takes a lot of intention, but you can you can do it if you yeah, if you set your intention and you know do the due diligence. It's systematizing it and it's learning how to cross from you know that first stage to the second stage of whatever level you're at. Now the third level, which I do not know because I'm not there yet. Um, we can say we're kind of there, but any parent is going to smack me for saying this. <laughs> we have a puppy, which kicked us into level three of having children. <laughs> so I'm sure all parents are like, whap. <laughs> Shut up, kid. You don't know what you're talking about. So, so level three is basically you start adding children to the picture, which, which again, the moment you add a child to the picture, it shakes everything up right. immediately back at level, at stage one of level three. And you're like, ah! You're back to the start. <laughs> I'm not sleeping. I'm not eating. Everyone's right. stressed out. Oh, like I, I, I've coached many people through the process over the years. Right. <laughs> and as a man, I have prepared myself. <laughs> when the day happens, I am well aware my life will get completely flipped upside down for a few months. Right. <laughs> um, and then, again, you start off completely crazy everywhere. You get to a way to figure out what works and how to work it. You systematize it and bingo, you're back in flow. Right. Right. Flow, I love that word. I love that word. So that, that's the thought process when it comes to really looking at growth. And that applies to everybody. You can be 65 years in business and, and still you know, have something new enter the picture and immediately get kicked back to level one and be like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. Or you, know, you could be dominating your market and all of a sudden the market changes right. or someone innovates. I mean, you could be blockbuster video, systematized, dominating billions of dollars. All of a sudden, you know, the market changes, Redbox and Netflix comes out, you're out of business. Mm-hmm. It's like, wow, you, you got kicked back to level one, but you didn't even know what to do when you got there because it's been so long since you've been there. Right. You're out of business. Right. So this is something really to stay fresh with in your mind and constantly be thinking about it. Like, okay, shoot, like how do I keep this fresh that if I have to ever innovate or if I have to, you know, scramble, I got my team ready to do it and I'm, and I'm systematized and I'm, I'm on board. Yeah. Do you have an infographic with that? Because this is like perfect infographic fodder. <laughs> um, we do. It's part of a performance coaching program. That yeah, we're that's, that's be awesome. Mm, probably six months, six, 12 months. We're, yeah. we're building it out right now. Um, it, it's a new, it's a new version of what we've been doing over these last 10 years and we're updating it and breaking it down into really usable systems for entrepreneurs at all levels. Very cool. Well, why don't you tell us what your plans are for the retreat this year? And if people want to get in touch with you, how can they find you? Um, so I'll start backwards. The easiest way to find me is on our websites. 
Okay. Uh, JerickRobbins.com. It's a tricky spelling. It's J A I R E K R O B B I N S dot com. Um, if you Google it and get close to it, you know, wiki and everything will point you in the right direction. <laughs> right. Um, they certainly know me online and they'll make sure you get to me. Yeah. And we'll put, uh, we'll put this in the show notes too. So you guys can find these in the show notes. Perfect. The other thing to do is make sure you join us in online in the communities, Twitter, Facebook, all the social channels. Um, we're constantly pushing out content for people, all free advice. It's all there. Uh, and we love to share and hear back from you what you think, how it's working, how it's useful. And we cover a variety of topics. So if one week you get one that ain't you, stick around. It's, yeah. It gets better every week. Um, as far as what we're doing for the retreat this year, we have not locked down the dates. Uh, we're taking people to East Africa is, as it's planned right now. And I, I've had tons of experience there. I lived there for three months volunteering in a village and teaching organic farming and English. Um, I, I've been back over the last years and, and hung out with the silverback gorillas in Rwanda, been whitewater rafting down the Nile, gotten to go on safari multiple times. Um, and we're trying to figure out the best itinerary that involves, you know, our three core principles, which is really having wild, crazy, fun adventures you'll never forget. Um, giving back, making a really big difference in the lives of the people that we cross paths with on our journey and, and developing ourselves, you know planning out your next year, planning out your 5, 10, 20 year vision and really developing who you are as a person and expanding yourself at the deepest level. Right. Right. Well, so it should be somewhere around November. Um, as soon as we lock in the dates, we'll have it all up on our website, which is rapidresultsretreat.com. Is there a place people can go to subscribe so that they'll hear about it? Yep. You... They go to rapidresultsretreat.com and they enter their name and email, uh, jump on that list. And each, each year as we, as soon as we lock in dates and as soon as we lock in, all the numbers and everything, we email it out to everybody and let them know exactly how they can get on board and lock in their space. Awesome. It sounds so fun. Is it going to be like three or four weeks? Do you know the time length yet? Um, I don't. Uh, the first one we did was a month long, and we got a lot of feedback from people that that's way too long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the idea of it is fantastic, but yeah, I, I relate. Went. Yeah, we, People who went loved it. Yeah. They've never experienced anything like it in their entire life, and they left this family. Yeah, totally. Like it changed their life in every way, shape, and form. And they still have a community that travels around the world continuously together. Uh huh. That's so fun. Uh, their family. And then what we did just to get more people to join us is we shortened it to 14 days. And now we, last year we did 10 days. So it should be right between probably 7 and 15 days. Okay. Um, maybe 10. But we, we haven't narrowed it down yet. And it changes each year. Sure. Well, this is really exciting. You'll have to keep us posted on when you're doing it. And I'll make sure to. Uh to send it out to our community through our channels and let people know that you've got everything figured out. But this has been awesome. Like I'm, I'm excited to go back and listen to this conversation again and take notes because you dropped some great gems that I wasn't expecting. And I really appreciate it. This was really fantastic. And I can feel your heart and your passion and your commitment to living an extraordinary life through our conversation. So thank you so much for joining us today, Jarek. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. All righty. Thanks for listening to Creative Entrepreneur Radio. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes. That helps others find our show. You can find links, contact information, and a recap of today's episode in the show notes found at creativeentrepreneurradio.com. Tweet Tell Misty. That's T-E-L-L-M-I-S-T-Y with your thoughts, ideas, or questions and join the conversation on our Facebook group. You can learn more about Misty and her work over at markatechu.com. See you next time.